Hello guys, this is Deathtail and welcome back to another episode on the Autocraft server. We're over here at our mega base because last time we actually did a bunch of work building this thing and today, today we're going to be spending a hell of a lot more time working on this area. I've been working on this a lot as of late because Minecraft 1.17 is right around the corner. We're going to be resetting for season 2 when that time comes. Which means that I need to do a hell of a lot of work because this thing is nowhere near finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue where we left off last time. So last time we bought up to this section where we left this massive hole in the design because I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to continue this thing up into the sky. Now as you may know I'm planning on building a massive dome up here so this will be a half sphere. That's the idea anyway. But we can't build that until we build everything that's meant to be on the inside of it. Hence why we're going to be working on, on this lower section here today. So what I'm thinking is since this is technically a spaceship of sorts, we need some way of powering this entire thing. So I'm thinking we should build a reactor room along with the corridors that will lead off from it into the different areas of the dome. Also, I still haven't lit up the area inside this properly, so we'll need to watch out for creepers and stuff like that. So with that out of the way, let's jump into hyperspeed build mode and get this part of the mega base constructed. I hope you enjoy. Alright, so I've completed the first segment of this time lapse, that being the structure for the reactor room and the corridors surrounding it. So currently we're in the upper corridors, right here is the reactor room and as you can see there is no reactor. The reactor will be built later on in this episode. So what we've done is we've got corridors linking to the reactor room up here and the link round like so. And then we've got elevators right here that don't have any water in them right now, that if we go down them, like so, there we go. This leads us to a lower level, which will, if we go to the corners right here, will connect to what we've built in the past. Now basically what I'm thinking is I want the reactor to be right in the centre here. I've got an idea for the design for it, but it is a little bit intricate, so I need to do some more planning before we quickly get to that. Now before we move on, there's one thing I'd like to mention. You may recognise this corridor design, or it may look very familiar to something you've seen before on the channel. That's because, it's not my original design. So if we head on over here to Splash's ship, which she's been doing a hell of a lot of work, look at the size of that ring, we will go and take a look at her corridor design. So yeah, as you can see, her design and my design is very, very similar. The only difference with mine is obviously we've got a different color palette. We don't have these, what do you call those, end roads in the walls and the shape is ever so slightly different. But uh, yeah, if you want to see this stuff in more detail and that massive ring we just saw, make sure you go and check out Splash's channel. That's linked in the description below. Also, just look at that there. I love the way that this pops out of the build we've done so far. And not only that, it allows me to start planning the dome, which we'll be doing at some point in a future episode. I'm not quite ready for that part of this build yet. So next up, why don't we get started on the reactor? I've left a sea lantern right there in the middle to denote where the middle of this build is, so that means we should be able to get building this reactor super quick. And once again, we're doing it in the form of a third person time lapse. So after many different design changes, the core reactor is now finished. I went through many different designs with this thing because to be honest with you, I didn't really know what I wanted this to look like. But I'm happy to say that the finished product is quite nice. This reactor room is a bit smaller than I'd hoped, but it should work for this build quite nicely. So basically what we've got is we've got the central core right here. In fact, let's get a spectator mode view of this thing because I think that'd be a bit better. 
So we've got the central core right here with a bunch of different arms coming off of it, securing it to each of the walls. And the idea is that these sea lanterns are acting as power conduits with a bunch of other things to make it look like a reactor. So as I said, this is the main core, and then we go up and we've got little bits of greebling and detailing work throughout this design. I also made sure to integrate it into the roof a bit differently to what I did elsewhere, because I thought that was quite important considering the fact that this is the centre of the base. And now as night time approaches, we should probably sleep, but before we do that, I'd like to address the elephant in the room. We still haven't put in these elevators. So we've got these ones here, so there's four on this level. We go down here. Now we've got all the elevators and this stuff here to do as well. So that's what's going to be our next little project. All right, so as you can see, the elevators are now in place. So we should be able to walk from the bottom of this base area and go right to the top. Let's do that real quick. And here we go. Awesome, right, that's cool. We've finally got that system in place. Now, I'd like to talk about my plans for this dome section. So obviously what we need to take into account with this build is we can't exactly build the dome first. And there's a reason for this. One being, I don't know exactly how big the dome's going to be. And two, well, it's a lot better for time lapses if we build the insides first. So basically what I need to do if I want to plan this out accurately is I would need to take a world download, so like a server backup, which is fine. And then every episode that I work on this, I just need to plan out a little bit ahead doing that stuff. One thing that we might want to think about is setting up a wireframe of the dome itself. Now this wireframe will be subject to change, but it will allow us to use a rough boundary to work out where our builds are going to go and how big we can be. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a wireframe, so it will be similar to what we did before, so something along the horizontal bit at the bottom, and then we'll have a vertical line going up as well so we know how tall this thing is going to be. And who knows, we may have some more lines in there just so that we know exactly where things can go and where things shouldn't be going. So the wireframe is finished and it looks fine from this angle, but once we get some altitude, it doesn't look anywhere near as good. There's too much space between the top of this section and the start of the dome. So we are probably going to end up moving this. Yeah, sometimes mistakes happen, but if we tackle them early enough on, it means we won't have any problems later on. Before we move it though, there is a few things I'd like to say about this. So this is a half sphere, obviously with a radius of 53 blocks. I originally wanted to do it with 63 blocks of radius, but it just felt way too big. The problem we had was we had edges that were hanging off the side of this structure right here. And it meant that all this detailing work, if I get some air bomb, there we go. All this detailing work here was pointless because you couldn't see it, oh, it's a lot more difficult. So that's why we went with the smaller size. So what I, th what I think I'm gonna do is we're gonna move this down by maybe 10 or so blocks so this uh, section right here should be in line with either this block this um what do you call it grey concrete or the quartz right there all right that looks a lot better yeah that took a little while and if we look at the gap down here you can see this is a lot closer to this surface than it was before so there should be from this layer of quartz at least five blocks of space which will allow us to do any other design work we need to do down below here the one thing I'm noticing is there's going to be a lot of unused space inside this dome in between this layer and that layer because of the way we've set out the levels. So what I'm going to need you guys to do is I'm going to need you to make some recommendations on what I should be putting in that section of the dome. But all in all, so far so good. I'm really happy with the progress we've made today. Alright, so after spending a bunch of time doing some base work today, I think it's time we move on to something a bit different. So recently we received a new order at our redstone contraption shop. And this order was a 10x10 redstone door for Sithlord Brit. Now the dimensions are 10x10, but that's not exactly true. Let's head on over to Brit's base and we'll take a look at where we need to put in this door. Alright, so we've arrived at Brit's base and this section right here is where the door is going to be. There is a few problems with this. Obviously we've got a incline right here, so we're going to need to handle that. Not only that, there's some detailing work here in the sides of the door which will impact our redstone. I've already spoken to Brit about this and we can make some modifications in certain areas so that we can get this door in place. 
So what we'll end up doing is we'll remove these detailing areas right here and right here and we're going to be moving the staircase forward out here. And then that means the resin door itself should be 12 blocks tall and 14 blocks wide if my mouth is correct. But what redstone door design are we going to go with? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's head into a redstone testing world. So here is the door design we're going to be using. It's very familiar to you if you've been watching the channel for a while because we also did this exact same design for LEGO. So what I've done is I've basically took the design we did for LEGO and I've scaled up a bit to match the dimensions of this door. So I guess we can do a little demonstration of this thing. So we've got some obsidian marking off where the roof is. And if I press this button, this system will activate. Now since this door is a bit bigger, it causes a bit more client side lag, which is unfortunate. But then again, that isn't really much of a problem because of how fast this door is. So that's it closed and then let's open it like so. And there you go, the door is that simple. And before anyone says this is not my design, this is a design by Mumbo Jumbo. I've just made a few modifications. Alright, so you've seen this design, I think it's now time we finally go and build it. And unlike the last time we did a door, I think this one should be done in the form of a third person time lapse. So after many failed attempts at getting this thing working, we have now finally finished. I did a bunch of testing which unfortunately I didn't record, but I had to rebuild this like 5 times, it was very very infuriating. But we've now finished, so let's walk on up here and give this a little test. So the activation switch is right here in this section, so we'll activate it, and we'll walk over here, and as you can see it activates just as normal. We then walk up this stairway which I built myself. Uh, we've made a few modifications here, I need to fix this little hole here, but we have a switch on the inside to close this system back up. Originally these stairs were all the right here, but for this design to work properly we had to extend it out, so we extended it out here, made a little alteration to this pathway, along with building these structures at the side to tie this into the overall build design. We've also got redstone hidden right behind here and I wanted to have that hidden so we've had to use some stone walls, or stone brick walls I should say, to hide all of that stuff. But other than that I am quite happy with this thing, I had to make a few additional changes. There was a thing of dark oak wood right here, you can see the remnants over there, that was actually breaking the flying machine. That was the one thing that was stopping this entire system from working, so I had to remove that, so unfortunately yeah, Brett, you're going to have to work out something else with this design here. Uh, a few things I should probably mention. You can't switch out any of these furnaces. They need to remain as remo immovable blocks. Because if you change them to something that can be moved, it will cause the flying machine system in this door to break. And that isn't exactly ideal. Well, all in all, I am quite happy with this thing. So let's close this up and we can call this another successful project. Alright, so since we finished that project, I figured we'd come over to the wrestling contraption shop and take out our profits. Alright, so here is one diamond block, and I think I'm also going to clear out these other receipts. And... be gone. And while we're here, I figured we'd go to our other shops and see what profits we have lying around. So we're over here at our trusty beacon shop. This seems to have taken some damage, and this water elevator isn't working. I wonder who did that. Looks at rustic. No, I'm joking, it was just some good fun, that's something simple we can fix. Alright, so we've got some diamonds, let's just take all these out. We'll need to refill those beacons. And we haven't sold any of our skulls. And since I last came over here, a new shop has popped up. This is the Grind Shop by Jason and Equinox. So if you need to grind for resources or stuff, you can just pay them and they'll do it for you. Also, I love how we can see Splash's ship from here, that looks fantastic. Alright, let's go and drop these diamonds off at the Captains of Industry stockpile. Alright, so I've went ahead and split these diamonds four ways, so let's take this bunch for the stockpile, and then these three stacks for myself, Rustic, and Splashes. Also, yeah, we now have quite the stockpile in here for resources and stuff like that, even though we probably will never end up spending any of this. One thing I'd like to mention, we've scheduled our next meeting with the fellow Captains of Industry for the next episode, because we want to build the Nether Hub. So, yeah, we're finally doing it, we're finally doing it, and that'll be coming next time. Alright, so while we fly back to our base, I thought I'd talk to you guys about a, something that's quite important. So, we are currently only 4 subscribers away from 6,000. 
That's 6,000 subs. That's mad. So if you've been watching this video up until this point and you haven't subbed yet, please go ahead and do so. Please make this the day that you subscribe. Because, yeah, if, if you've been watching for this long, you must enjoy the content. So why not? Also, yeah, just, oh my, every time I fly by this thing, it just, it, it's mesmerizing. It looks so good. It looks fantastic. But yeah, we are now back at base. I love the progress we've made here today. Just we've done so much stuff. Isn't anyone near as much as we did last time with this bottom section, but we've planned this area out quite thoroughly. Also, that's where my bed was. I went and crafted up another one because I forgot where it was. Ha, huh, okay, I guess I now have two beds. But you know, this boundary we've set up will really help for future episodes. It means that I don't need to do anyone near as much planning as I would have otherwise. So I can just go ahead and build different rooms and corridors and stuff like that without having to worry. Also, this boundary does give me a really good idea of how big this build is eventually going to be. Obviously, this area at the top looks quite flat. That is because I never bothered making the boundary for that section because we won't be getting to that point for quite some time. Plus, we'll probably want to do something interesting up here. Now, I had originally planned on keeping this shot up in the mountains, but obviously, as you can see right here, we are quite close to that limit. And if you look over there, we're almost as high as Zem's new um, hole on top of his mountain over there. Alright, so before we end the episode, there's something else I'd like to mention real quick. If you haven't known this already, Autocraft Season 2 is right around the corner. When 1.17 releases, we're going to be resetting for a new season. So if you're interested in this series, if you'd like it, and if you'd like to be a part of it, there's a link in the description to an application form in Google Docs. Feel free to go and fill it out, and hopefully we'll be seeing you around in the next season. Uh, one thing I should probably mention, we only accept users above the age of 16, and content creators. We don't accept people who don't create content. But all in all, that's it for this episode. It may have been a shorter one, but to be honest, I think it was well worth it. We did a lot of stuff in this episode. And next time, we plan on doing a lot more, mainly the Nether Hub. So make sure you come back for that. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, why don't you leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell icon. And hey, why don't you check out this video?